So one of the things happening at Davos um, uh, this week is that the Saudis in particular are bringing together a bunch of uh, Arab leaders and I think moneyed interests as well as sitting down with the Europeans and, uh, and the Americans. And they are devising or propose, proposing a grand peace plan, a, a, not just a ceasefire, but a solution to the Middle East problems that's overarching and overreaching and comprehensive. Uh, what the Saudis are basically proposing is not only that there be a total uh, a cessation of hostilities in the Gaza Strip uh, and on the northern border of Israel with Hezbollah, but hostages should be released. Israel should um, uh, uh, immediately uh, work to establish a Palestinian state. The European countries and the United States will guarantee that they will recognize such a Palestinian state, that it will immediately gain membership in the United Nations. The Saudis uh, will uh, pour gazillions of dollars into this so-called Palestinian state. Um, and, uh, you know, some money will pour in. Uh, political leadership will be attained. Uh, and in, in exchange, I guess, for all this, the, Saudi, the Saudis will recognize Israel. Uh, Arab countries are from all over the Middle East, uh, in addition to those who signed on to the Abraham Accords, will sign peace deals uh, with Israel, all in exchange for Israel's commitment, uh, i.e. irreversible steps, they define it, uh, Israel take these irreversible steps towards the establishment of a Palestinian state. And if all this happens, we get to live happily ever after. And I think the sad thing is about all this is that uh, Israel is likely to be tempted uh, you know, depending on how exactly uh, they define a Palestinian state, depending on how they define irreversible steps, depending on who exactly comprises the government in Israel at the time, it seems like this is where Israel is heading right now. It, it, it is heading to some kind of ceasefire in exchange for uh, hostage release and then some kind of political solution. Uh, to uh, uh, to the, pro the, the the issues in the Gaza Strip, uh, to uh, to the the, the uh, and and you know whether Israel is willing to guarantee the establishment of a Palestinian state or not, that seems to be kind of the outline of a plan. Saudi Arabia has basically indicated, and this is a huge kind of dangling benefit in front of Israel to to establish these peaceful relationships with Israel and bring with it a bunch of other countries that haven't yet uh, done so. I mean, um, so, so this, is, this is kind of where it, 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 it seems to be. It looks like the Europeans and the Americans are behind this. Uh, they, they, they seem to agree. Um, you know, one big, uh, uh, you know, kumbaya, it seems to be happening in Davos around uh, this potential uh, peace deal. Of course, what the deal does is it evades the actual causes of the conflict. It, it evades the fact that the Palestinians seem to be fairly consistently dedicated to the destruction of the state of Israel. It evades the fact that Hamas will not be destroyed under such a plan, will still be around, will still have influence, uh, but it's not just Hamas, that the Palestinian people, uh, their dedication to killing Jews will not have changed. It evades the fact that Israel has on its northern border a, uh, a, a committed organization, the Hezbollah, the most powerful organization within the state of Lebanon, committed by, by every means possible to the destruction of the state of Israel and the killing of its Jewish population. It ignores the fact that behind all of these lies Iran, which is dedicated to, I'm repeating myself, the destruction of the state of Israel and the killing of the Jews who reside there. And all of those elements, the, the religionist Palestinians, the Islam, us, Islamists, Hamas Islamists, Hezbollah Islamists, Iranian Islamists, are all really dedicated 
without, you know, they, they, they don't say it very often, but they're all dedicated to the establishment of a global Sharia, global jihad, in which Sharia law will be the dominant power, the dominant law in the whole world, not just Israel. But other than that, peace is a wonderful thing and, and we should strive towards it and why not cut a deal while we evade the actual source, the actual heart, the actual essence of the actual problem. Let's just plaster it over again. And then one day when they all rise up again, including the Saudis and the Egyptians and the rest of them, and wipe out the state of Israel, the rest of the world will say, God, how, how, we didn't know. We, we, couldn't have, we, couldn't have, we couldn't have known. I mean, they really did say that this time it was going to be peace. I mean, the Saudis signed a deal. The Egyptians, long time peace, and, and the Palestinians, they got their state. Why, why, why would they do this? Living with no principles, a pragmatic existence, is short term, it's unhappy, it's unbelievably destructive. And that's what this peace, quote, so-called peace deal is, uh, is requiring. Uh, it's a catastrophe. Israel should uh, reject it. The United States, of course, should reject it, but the United States has no principled leadership and no principled leadership on the horizon. Uh, the, the, the leadership on the horizon um, uniformly is a pragmatic, short-term deal-making. How about that? Deal-making. Trump will come in and he'll cut a deal. Yeah, this kind of deal. A deal that is destructive to the very essence of liberty and freedom for the one people who actually promote some level of liberty and freedom and that is the people of Israel.